All right, so this is like the fifth time I've tried to say what I'm doing, but from my other videos, I ended up finding out these batteries are toast. Uh, they're six 8D 245 amp batteries, and you can see that's not right. I don't know how something didn't happen. I don't know why they still worked. Why They still work right now. So I'm going to take all of these out of here. They're like 150 pounds a piece. And they're huge. So I'm going to put them on my trailer and then try to figure out what the hell to do with them. So my plan is to get rid of these batteries and put lithium in. And in order to do that, you got to start back here at the back. And so this right here is a Delco 50DN. It is a 24 volt, 270 amp alternator. Uh, right here, this is another alternator and it goes to my start batteries. So I'm gonna leave it alone. But what I found out so these alternators, if you don't know about it, so this one's oil cooled, but on the <clears throat> quick uh, alternator 101, when this thing turns, you have a positive and negative wire. And to get voltage and current out of it, you've got to apply a field voltage to the field wire and then so that's what makes your current come out so it had this wire connected to it well i found it's connected to this so what i'm thinking is when i ran my chassis batteries down this winter and they wouldn't hold a charge i think this thing was pumping voltage into those other batteries so i don't know Anyway, so what I'm gonna do, the part of the problem is, is that lithium batteries on a standard alternator, like on your car, they'll pull too much amps through it and uh, burn it up. I've got the reverse problem. This one's 270 amp. My battery's BMS has 100 amp, so what I've found is I'm getting this other device. I'll show it up here and I'll put a link. It's called a watt speed uh, voltage regulator. And so what happens is, is you connect one line of the watt speed to your battery, the uh, positive and negative. Actually with this watt speed, it, it takes a whole bunch of information. But basically the gist of it is, is that it will regulate this alternator with that field wire to a lithium setting. And so it'll take a whole bunch of settings. Now, one issue is, is the lithium batteries, if there's a setting out of parameter, it could shut itself off. And then what happens is they call it a load dump. And if this thing's chugging out voltage and current and the battery cuts off the uh, positive wire, it'll, I guess, create a huge voltage spike and melt down your alternator and seize it up. So I found this other device, it's called an Al Sterling Alternator Protection Device. I'll put a link and picture up here. And what that does is in the event that happens, it will dissipate that voltage spike out. So the voltage spike can go up to infinity, but as the voltage goes up, the current goes down. So it's very low current, very high voltage. And so it doesn't take that much of wire. And so what it's supposed to do is dissipate that out. So kind of figured out the answer to a couple problems, I guess, is that a voltage dump from the BMS and uh, how to control the alternator. And so the one problem I'm gonna have is I've got a 3000 watt and a 3000 watt alternator or uh, inverter, and they're gonna pull from a 5000 watt 
uh, 100 amp battery, but um, I'm gonna make this also 24 volt uh, instead of 12, 212s, because if the BMS in the 212 volt batteries that are making the 24, if one of them goes out, then I've got a 12 volt battery in between a 24 volt system and that's bad. So I'm getting a 24 volt, 5,000 watt lithium battery. And then if it shuts down, the inverters will just go off. And then the load dump to the alternator, um, that protection device will, will uh, keep it. So now the other thing I've found is I've, this is just on my coach, I've got my 12 volt load and then back here, I ended up finding out that goes to my Aqua Hot. So I've got a 24 volt to 12 volt uh, DC converter. I'll put a link and a picture up here. And what that'll do is it'll take my 24 volt lithium battery, step it down to the 12 volt for up here. Um, so I should be able to run everything. So the one not really issue is that I'm gonna get rid of all these batteries. It's probably 7,000 watts of power. By the time you take 40 to 50% of it, the new battery is gonna be almost the size of that panel. And so I'm gonna rip all this out. I'm gonna be able to take the vanners out, all of this wiring. So that's probably gonna be 1,500 pounds. I'm just gonna take out and then I'm gonna stick this little battery in there. So, I don't know, probably take the time, I guess, to take some of these wires, maybe push them over in this bay and clean it up. I'm not real sure. But uh, that's the plan that I've got coming up. Um, just wanted to share a quick video. Um, should be getting some parts later this week, uh, next. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and rip these batteries out, try to clean the bay up, and uh, get it ready for the... Uh... I was going to add real quick, again, this is just a quick video um, before I make another one, I guess, just showing you what I'm doing. So I went in and I added up um, all the stuff that runs off of that 12 volt, and I can only get to like four or 500 amps, and that's with the alt aqua hot and the aqua hot is that back there so i've got a uh, 24 to 12 70 amp um, converter so i think i should be fine um, if i need more i can add more um, the other thing that i'm going to have to work through is the battery if it gets below 32 degrees it won't accept a charge i think you can still pull current from it but it won't accept it so i'm trying to figure out some way to keep it warm and I don't I can just throw the battery right here so I don't know I'm trying to figure out what to do with all of this I've got to leave not this Friday but next Friday um, so I need to get it all hooked up at least and I guess try it out and then I can tear it all back apart if I want to but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and in the video here, just kind of letting you know what I'm doing. Basically, these batteries are toast. So if anybody wants them, let me know. You gotta come here and get them. And uh, gonna put new lithium in, gonna connect those to my inverters, and gonna have a 24 to 12 step down to run my 12 volt loads, take out all the vayner, everything in this bay. Um, and then the monster alternator. I'm going to have this wake speed device that's going to control the uh, field voltage uh, to the alternator. I'm going to dial it down because my new battery is only 100 amp. Um, and then I'm also going to put that uh, protection device for the alternator. So if the uh, battery says, hey, I'm shutting down, um, it won't hurt the alternator. Now, the one thing that I, I Think will be interesting is if the battery shuts down i got to look at the settings of the weak speed but i can run 270 amps to my alternators um, i don't need my batteries at that point so it'd be kind of interesting the other thing i can do too is if i add another battery the 
uh, in and out is 200 amps. And if I add three batteries, the in and out's 300 amps. And so the problem kind of goes away the more batteries you add. But the more batteries you add at 5,000 watts piece, um, more money it costs. So I'm going to start off with one for now and uh, see how it goes. But um, that's where I'm going to end it here. I'm going to upload it just so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'll uh, keep adding more. Again, I'll put links to all the stuff I'm using. So. so the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove all the fuses from the positive side, and that will take the load uh, off the inverters, which they're off now, and then I'll work on then taking the uh, negatives off of the batteries and then trying to slowly um, pull all the cables off of this and uh, hope, I don't know, well, after I do that, I'm going to have to undo the vanners. Uh, so I'll have to read on there which ones. It's got a sequence on there of how to put it together and take it off. So, and take uh, the vanners off. All right. So I got the fuses out. I got the vanners unhooked. And now I'm working on pulling all the cables off, trying not to cause any sparks. So I got... A lot of the cables off, all the crap out, and I've pulled the batteries onto this cart and then moving them over there, a couple hundred pounds a piece. Now I just got to get these three babies off of here. Where there's a will, there's a way. So I got my big cooler and I'm pulling the batteries down on the cooler and I'm putting the coolers or the batteries on here and wheel them over. So, let's break the height down. All the batteries are now on the trailer. What is that? 150, 3, 6, 9, 900 pounds of batteries. And probably 100 pounds of cable. Now I got a mess. I'm gonna work on getting that table out of there. All right, it's 10.30. I got everything out of here. Got the generator battery out. I think this wood is trashed. I'm thinking some of that acid came out and destroyed it, so. I don't know how I'm gonna Hopefully that panel just kind of sits in there and I can put another one in. I have no idea how that works. But <clears throat> now you can kind of see that battery could sit right there on the ground. I could have that whole bay open where I could move some of the stuff. So I don't know, figure it out. Well, I decided to include a little bit more in the video. So this is just the next morning starting to get some of my pieces. I'm supposed to get the wake speed by seven o'clock tonight, so I'll probably do a separate video on it. But these are the cables, the boards, all that crap that I took out. What I have in the bus right now is a smart charger that can also be a power supply. So this is 120 volt to 24 volt, and it is 12 amp. And so I got that for my start batteries but I don't think I need it. Um, I figured out how I drained them. So I may, I gotta figure this out cause I got a 16 amp in the bus right now. But then this is my Orion, uh, there it is, 24 to 12 to 70. And so basically you hook the ground up, you put the input on and then you get the output. Um, it's switchable too. And then there's a little screw right there, I can adjust the output. <clears throat> and so that'll run all my loads. Um, over here is a thousand pounds of batteries. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. And then I got that shelf out. I don't know how these didn't explode, I think. 
You can see the freaking lead plates in there and the glass mat and all of that. It's kind of scary. Um, there was one in the back. Yeah, that was the one in the back. I think one of these, one or two of these still might work. Um, I might, I don't know, they're all. That one over there doesn't look deformed. And I think this one. So my first one and last one in the series were fine. So I don't know. I don't know what I do with it if I keep it. But what I've got over here is a mess. Looks a little different in the morning. So I still have to get the banner out and pull all that out. And then I've got my 12 and 24 volt termination blocks. I may or may not keep those now. Um, and that'll clean a lot of that up. It's a lot of battery sense cables, uh, meter cables. Um, I had that uh, other system in there that monitors it, sends cell signals. So I don't know. The other is, is I think the acid leaked. So you can see this. It's either wet or it leaked. I don't leaked acid. Now I got to figure out. I don't know how this is mounted to the underside. Because <clears throat> the underside's got like a insulated coating on it. So I need to try to figure out how to get all that out and cleaned up. But like I said, the battery is going to be about that size. Um, I think it'll get too busy in here. I don't know if I may take this and put it over on the other side. Uh, the alternator or the uh, generator battery, it comes in from up top and then it comes over and then it sat over there. So it could sit over here in the corner, but I don't know thinking maybe do I do a battery bay? Um, I don't know. I've got a lot of room. I could really too, that's a generator start box. Um, it's a transfer switch for a 240 volt dryer that we don't have. I hate to take it out, but I don't need, I don't need the Victron transfer switch, the 30 amp 240 volt or the generator start stop. If I could get rid of all of that, I could stick it all over here, have that bay open. I don't know. That's my big dilemma. And I've got to be on the road next Friday. So I may, I may just hook it up and then uh, figure it out. I'd really like to get that plywood out, but I'm gonna go ahead and post this video um, give me some thoughts, suggestions, and uh, I'll keep pushing some videos out as I get parts in.